All right, welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be attending. We appreciate you participating in this Autodesk webinar that we are presenting today. Uh, today we have the privilege of welcoming Andrew Manzi and Ian Matthew, who are going to present BIM for Plant Design. And as a, a few items to note, um, this is generally a monthly webinar that we are hosting and the purpose of these webinars is to bring the creators and um, some of the uh, the design team together with a lot of the users and the customers of the product together to demonstrate some different workflows some of the items that may be new or or upcoming and this is an opportunity for us to, to correlate and, and go over some of these items together as an item of note um, Next month, excuse me, next month will be, um, uh, Esri is going to be presenting, but in November, there is what we're calling an undisclosed civil 3D workflow. And um, this is going to be presented by myself and John Sayre. We will have a chance to, to, to present some things that are coming up with uh, civil 3D. And uh, just as a note, it's top secret and classified. I say that somewhat tongue in cheek, but um, aren't really allowed to divulge just yet what it is, but uh, hopefully we'll generate some excitement to, to allow you guys to uh, to come on board and see what, what we've got cooking next. Um, in addition, we've also uh, want to invite everybody to check out the uh, AEC webinar portal. This is where you'll see any sort of upcoming webinar uh, registration option opportunities, as well as previous webinars will be broadcast here. We also will post uh, a lot of information here on the civil community site, as well as any of these previous broadcasts as well. So a couple different options for you to, to, uh, to choose from for those who are interested in uh, seeing something that you may have missed, or if you're not able to attend some of these webinars, this is where you can find them. As a matter of note, uh, anything that's discussed as future is not a guarantee that it will be in the product and any kind of purchasing decisions uh, don't shouldn't uh, be based on what we talk about, but I believe everything that we've got uh, in that today is, is already in the software. So as always, we want to invite everybody to ask questions um, in your uh, go to webinar palette. You'll see that there is a questions portion. We invite you to, to ask questions as we go along. We, we know that we'll get more questions than we're able to answer or uh, with time permitting, but we will do the best that we can to, to answer the questions that are, that are very pressing. And so um, we do also have a transcript of that. So if you do have a question that we're not able to, to answer it on the spot or during the course of the webinar, we will try and follow up with that later on. With that, um, we have a couple of poll questions. So I would like to turn the, uh, the time over to the, the poll question to enable those. And we will let that run for just a minute or two. So we want to just find out um, if you're currently using Plan 3D. So we'll let that go for a couple more seconds. Okay, so not quite half, looks to be good, but uh, hopefully this will uh, give you some, some good information regarding this. Let's go ahead and initiate the second question then. Just wanna find out your primary discipline. So we'll just take a few seconds to answer that one as well. Give that about 10 more seconds here. Okay. All right, we'll go ahead and end that. So it looks like most people are in uh, piping and water networks, as it may be. So very good, and uh, some site and civil. So welcome with that. I'm going to turn the floor over to Andy and Ian. Okay, thanks. Uh, let's just see if we can get this. So if someone can tell me if they can see my screen. You're good to go. Looks like it's good. Yeah, great. Okay, hi everyone. Um, so yeah, BIM for uh, plant design. So uh, we're going to present this, this workflow uh, for you that we've devised. Um, we're going to be looking at it through the lens of a water, wastewater, uh, project a, um, a small 
uh, pump station example, which, which we produced. Um, the order um, that we're going to go through it will be that I will uh, just go through you know, what the work workflow actually is. Um, I'll then look at the site and building design side. So we'll do a, bit in, do a little bit in InfraWorks, a little bit in Revit. Um, and then I'll hand over to Ian, who is going to cover the uh, plant design side with Plant 3D. And then once he's finished that, he'll hand back to me and I'll go over the, uh, the design review side with um, a little bit of Navisworks, uh, Revit and InfraWorks. Okay, so the, um, the, sort of like the broad brush uh, workflow uh, is sort of divided up into the four main buckets really. So um, the site design side uh, will be using InfraWorks for the, the planning and con you know, conceptual stages. Um, we'll use Revit for the building design, so building up building fabric, uh, utilities, um, office areas, stuff like that. Um, obviously, we'll be using Plant 3D for the, the plant design, so both the PNID and, and the plant modeling itself. Um, and then at the end, uh, sort of design review side, so class detection, documentation, visualization, that sort of stuff, we'll be using uh, a mixture of products, um, Navisworks, Infoworks, and also uh, some Revit as well. Okay, so the, the detail of the, the workflow is, um, is, is like this really. So um, although we'll, we'll, we'll start in InfraWorks, we probably won't be uh, pushing any data from uh, InfraWorks into Revit. We'll probably start the, the building model uh, from scratch in Revit. But anything we do produce in Revit, we can then uh, push back into InfraWorks to uh, view in, in context. Um, the Revit building that we produce, um, we will then uh, push to Plant 3D, uh, and then we can use the uh, the building as a, a reference while we're building the uh, the plant. Um, and that plant then can be pushed back to to Revit to see see it all fit together, um, and also produce uh, some documentation. I mean, Plant 3D will will produce stone documentation as well. Um, and then we can assemble all of that into Navisworks, do a bit of clash detection, um, and then the final project can be viewed um, all in context uh, in the InfraWorks model. Okay, so that is the that is basically the workflow. So we start off in we start off in InfraWorks. So this is a um, this is a model that I've I've used. I've I've pulled this out using uh, the model builder. Uh, and what we'll do is I'll just explain uh, where we where we are. Okay, so uh, this is a uh, a water treatment uh, plant here. So the the story here is that we're we're taking uh, processed water uh, from from this area. There'll be some some sort of pipeline over to a pumping station uh, in this area here. Uh, and then we'd be pumping that out uh, to add to the uh, the existing service, which will be in the uh, somewhere in the highway here. Okay, so the uh, the first thing we want to do, just almost regular InfraWorks stuff, um, just try and develop something to give us an understanding of you know roughly what it might uh, what you know what it might look like, what it could be. Okay, so you can see we've got um, we've got some ground here that needs needs dealing with. So what we can do is we can go uh, straight into the tools, uh, pick a coverage, um, car parking with a with a white outline, and then what we'll do is we'll just draw on here what we think the uh, the project could could be size wise. It could cover this this sort of area like so. Okay, so you can see it's still draped over the the terrain there. But if I say shape terrain, I can make some changes there, and that'll that should flatten that out. Okay, so that's now dealt with that uh, difficult difficult terrain there. Um, 
So our pumping station would be over in this corner, I think. So we can we can find um, some of the building tools, uh, pick something, and we'll just draw on the building just so we can get an idea of what it might look like. So we okay, go from here, just something like that. Okay, you won't be that big, so we can we can pull it down. It'll be an industrial building, some of that sort of size. Um, and what we can do is we can continue to add things like car parking um, and uh, develop the the site in general to to see how it uh, how it works. And we can do that uh, we can do that very quickly. Okay, so we'll come back to this in a moment. But what I want to do now is just move on to the Revit side. And then we'll see what that might look on this uh, on this site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to go to Revit. So you can see I've I've, I've built this um, this sort of industrial building really, um, where we're going to site the uh, uh, sort of like the pumping plant and some other processing plant in, inside. And um, we'll just go to one of the other. It's probably a better view. So we can see we have um, we have all the offices, have all the offices built out. Um, we're at different levels. This is split level because we've got uh, piping coming from outside underground. We'll process it and then and then pump it out underground as well. Um, so we've just used the the normal uh, Revit tools that um, that you've probably seen many many times to to, to produce this. Um, one of the one of the newer tools uh, that that we used, probably worth looking at, was the um, the, the new steel connections. Um, so I can just finish off this uh, this one here. So if I just go to steel, and if I hit that connections tab, like so, we should see uh, the connections dialog pop up. There we go. So we can see we have all these automatic connections that we can use for uh, Revit Steelwork now. Um, and if we uh, we just hit connection, you'll see these are the, the ones which I've got loaded into this particular project. And we've got this one, uh, this like haunch connection selected. Um, and if I just uh, click on these two here, you'll see it will it'll create that connection for us. There we are. Okay, very quick and easy. Okay, um, so that is the that's the Revit model that we're going to use. So if I want to get that into InfraWorks now to um, to, to visualise what that what that might look like, that is purely a drag and drop operation. Okay, so if we go back to to InfraWorks, um, and I've got uh, you know my 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 uh, my Revit project, I can just drag and drop that into this project, um, and it it will appear. Okay, so that needs to go off to our cloud service for conversion. It's going to take a minute or two to do that, which we which we don't have. And so prior to this. I've um, I've already done that, so I'll just change proposal so you can see what that looks like. Um, I've also built it out a little bit more as well in terms of um, you know the, the the context of the of the model itself. So we'll just have to give that a moment to um, to generate. Okay, so we can see. So this is our this is our Revit model that we've that we pulled in. Uh, we can go. Uh, we can go inside, and we can see that uh, everything is there. Just come through from the Revit model, and that's now you know, ready for um, uh, for any any visualization you, you might want to do. And then, as we uh, make any changes to the Revit model, we can update update this, and we'll see that happening um, you know, as the as the project progresses. Okay, so I think 
Um, I think at that point I'll, I'll hand over to Ian and he's going to go through um, creating the, uh, the plant 3D content and then when he's finished that we'll see how we can pull all this in and, uh, and, and see that in InfraWorks, Revit and uh, Navisworks as well. So I am going to hand over to you, Ian, now. Thank you, Andy. So hopefully you can now see my screen. And uh, so what I'm going to do now is uh, let's take a look at uh, how we handle the process piping uh, in the water treatment facility. So you see, this is the workflow that, uh, that Andy started. We're going to concentrate uh, now on the uh, on the plant 3D side, which is for creation of PNIDs and uh, the 3D model and the documentation of the uh, <clears throat> of the facility. So as that, as uh, Andy mentioned, the product we're going to use to create the process plant components of the BIM model is AutoCAD Plant 3D. This is now available as a, the AutoCAD Plant 3D tool sets, and within Plant 3D, we've got three primary components. One is PNID for the creation and editing of uh, PNIDs. Two is Plant 3D modeling for the modeling process of uh, for the modeling of process equipment, uh, process structures such as pipe racks and structures supporting equipment, and of course the process piping. And the third aspect is uh, the creation and updating of the documentation from the 3D model, such as piping orthos uh, and uh, ISOs. Um, first thing is Plant 3D is project-based, and we've actually everything that you do is is uh, done within a Plant 3D project. And you might think, well, that's pretty difficult to do, but uh, no, it's not. I'm going to show you how easy it is to actually create a, a, a 3D project. So um, first thing we do is we actually click on the new project. Uh, pull down in project manager just over here right and up comes the first of six screens which we now work on so the first thing we'll do is we'll edit we'll give the project a name and then we'll define a location for the folder structure for that particular project then we move on to the next screen which is actually defining whether we're going to be working in in imperial units or in metric, and metric is subdivided into mixed units or in pure metric. The third screen actually asks you if you want to work, which type of symbology you want to use for, in this case, it could be either uh, PIP or ISA, standard symbols. And then the fourth screen, which we see up here now, is actually defining the substructure of the project in terms of folders which will hold all of the particular files. We subdivide that into things like 3D models, uh, piping specs, where the ortho drawings will be stored, and where any of the supporting files, such as spreadsheets or, or external references uh, that are not Plant 3D based would be stored. So we can actually organize that pretty well. So once we've defined those, which, are, by the way, the, the general default is uh, is is uh, set up for you, and most people don't change that. The next definition is to set up with the database, and in Plant 3D, the database is actually an SQL database, so um, you can um, create that quite easily using SQL Lite, which is free um, for small projects. Uh, and for larger projects, we recommend the use, which it, when I say larger, I mean both in size and also mainly in the use of number of pipers, we would uh, use SQL um, server to define the database. And the setup of that is done within that. So the next thing to do is the last screen is just simply, do you want to make any changes once the project is set up? So now the project's set up, we can easily go ahead and create a drawing. In this case, I'm going to create a PNID and we're ready to run. So now let's go ahead and look at the creation and editing of uh, PNIDs. So in this case, we, we have a PNID which we've started, and we're going to go ahead and start to uh, 
place some equipments. It, everything is uh, symbol based over on the on the right hand side there you'll see pallets that show all of the equipment items. These are PIP um, symbols that we will uh, pull in to create the model. You can customize that easily so you can have your own specific uh, uh, symbology for pipes, for equipment, for valves, etc, etc. And now what we're going to do is we've placed a pump, we're going to give it a tag number and uh, and that will appear on the drawing. We place the tag wherever we want. So now let's go ahead and actually do some lines. So go connect that up to the uh, incoming line. And so here, what, as we place, uh, you'll see that the lines automatically connect to existing lines and flow arrows are automatically placed. If you're going in the wrong direction, you can simply reverse the flow and the flow arrows go the way you want them to be. Um, next thing we'll go ahead and do is let's insert some valves. In this case, we'll, we'll insert a valve which automatically orientates to the direct to the flow of the line. We're going to place a, a, a reducer since the line size into the pump is going to be smaller than that of the header. And now let's go ahead and assign the tag. First thing we'll do is we'll assign a, a smaller line size, 12 inches, and we'll place the tag. And you'll watch as we place the tag, and we have various different styles. In this case, we're just going to put an oval style. You see down there that if you look at the reducer, you see that that's now a 16 by, it's automatically labeled 16 by 12. The line size for the valve is also 12 inches. So now let's continue on and we'll deal with the line coming out of the pump. Notice that the connection is automatically made to the uh, to the nozzle coming out of the pump as we place it. When we place the check valve, as you see here, notice not only does it orientate with the line itself and automatically break it, but the actual direction of the check valve automatically orientates with the line direction itself. And we're here we're going to have a simple tag which just simply decide shows the size of that line. Uh, we can have various different types. And I'll go ahead and place a check valve. And again, we're going to put a change the size of that line going into the into the, the header up the end top there. We assign the size of that. That's going to be 16 inches. And note that the reducer automatically changed, switched around and the size of it changed. Now we're going to head, go ahead and place a control valve. Uh, you probably notice quickly the, uh, the um, choice of the body and the, and the solenoid was part of the selection process. And now we've gone ahead and placed the, the uh, place the, the, the valve. The last thing we're doing here is we've got a drain coming out and the, the, the valve on that drain is normally closed. So just simply by selecting what state of that, we automatically redraw that from open to, to closed. So the last thing we're going to do is we've completed the line and uh, let's go ahead and and actually we're going to have three pumps in the system. So we'll just use uh, the good old copy command to uh, to complete the PNID. Now, once the copy is done, the cleanup will be to uh, to change the, uh, the the tag numbers on all of the lines, uh, since they'll be def they'll, they'll, the actual number will be uh, defaulted to to uh, a question mark to show that it's a copy. Now, many times we're working with PNIDs and we want to add textual information that's going to come from from uh, engineers externally. So, um, we in this case, what we can do is we can use an, uh, a spreadsheet approach to actually export the data from the database from the PNID 
uh, into uh, an Excel spreadsheet, hand that spreadsheet over to whoever needs to add the data, and then import that data into the PNID. So let me show you how we do that. So here we do, uh, we go going to export this particular information. Now here's the spreadsheet that's created, and we can go ahead and just use, just add text information, etc. This is a standard Excel spreadsheet, so you've got all of the Excel tools available to you to uh, put whatever you want. So here we're defining the information about the pumps. And since the three are the same, we'll just we'll just copy and paste. And now we'll go back to the PNID, and we're going to now take that spreadsheet that we edited, open it. It shows the information that's changed. So what's highlighted in the in the data manager part up the top there is what's changed, and it also highlights in this PNID the equipment items that have changes. Then, then to bring that in, we just accept the information, and that's added to the to the uh, the PNID itself. So now we've got information. One thing we want to do frequently is create reports. The data manager in uh, in in uh, PNID allows us to produce fairly standard uh, line lists, etc., valve lists, nozzle lists, whatever. That these come and they can be formatted. You can be customized uh, into whatever format you want. So now let's go ahead and look at uh, plant 3D as far as the 3D model is concerned. So here's the the drawing that, or the model of the building that uh, Andy created. And we're going to use that as an XREF. And in order to bring that into uh, into plant 3D, it's best for us to use that as a as a DWG. So Andy had uh, nicely converted that to uh, to an AutoCAD file using the Revit process. Uh, we'd uh, also defined a, a position where which would be our plant origin. And so now what I'm going to do is take this, make it an XREF in my plant 3D model, um, simplify what we see. So here's the the structure of the drawing, just what you saw earlier. Let's get rid of some things so we can play around with it. So now what we've done is we've clipped it and we're ready to start doing some modeling in Plant 3D. This is an XREF. We're actually working in Plant 3D um, over the over on the left hand side. Uh, you have your uh, your project information over on the right hand side. You have your tool palette for uh, working with piping components, structures, etc. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put some of our own supporting structures uh, for the pumps. And uh, so we use the structural tool set. Uh, and the first thing we'll do is we'll define some footings for the pumps. And so here we'll do is we'll just enter the dimensions of those foundations and place them. So I'm just going to change the color so we can see it more clearly. And now what we'll do is go ahead and place an equipment item. So our equipment in Plant 3D, is we have a library of uh, standard type of uh, process equipment. And uh, in this case, we're going to use a, a pump which has been customized, and we've stored it as a template, which you'll see just coming up now. So we select templates, there's our vertical pump. And now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start to create it. At each of the components, we have dimensions. So you can see we're stepping down the, the structure of the pump. This is the bottom cylinder, which is currently set to nine feet. We're going to set that to six feet bottom of it, and now let's go ahead and create it. 
and we'll place that on the structure. And now just orientate the actual pump itself. And now we need to, to position the nozzles for that particular pump. So let's first of all get rid of the floor so we can see what we're doing a bit easier. And we need an input and output nozzle. The default position of the input nozzle is not where we want it to be, so we'll go ahead and edit that. And this tutorial allows us, first of all, to define the the facing for the for the nozzle it's a 150 pound uh, raised face flange nozzle and then we also on the same screen determine its position in this case it's one foot six from the origin and it's going to be 180 degrees instead of zero degrees so it comes facing towards us there you go now we go ahead and let's add a second nozzle and here we select the the add nozzle command and set the type 12 inches raised face flange 150 pound and now we place its location in this case it's going to be at 10 feet from the origin all, all the rest is the same and now it places a nozzle for for you. So there's our completed pump. So now all we need to do is we need three of those. So we'll just copy that two more times. And there's our three pumps. So now one of the things that um, that we take full advantage of is we created a PNID. We created an intelligent PNID in the in the project. So now let's use that information that's in the PNID to help drive the um, information that we need in order to model those lines. So let's go ahead and and do that. So here's the PNID that we um, we created before few little things more things have been added and you see it attaches from the header to uh, to the uh, the pump p100a so we're here in the model we select the command which is for which allows us to link directly to the PNID Here's the line at the, in the top left-hand corner. You'll see that's the line that we're actually going to work with, uh, line 103, and it breaks it down into certain parts. So here we select that's the line that we're going to place. So now it automatically pulls in its size, its spec, and everything else. And now we connect to the nozzle, and we connect to the, the header line. Now, if you look carefully, that was a 12-inch line connecting to a 16-inch header. So it's automatically placed according to the branch table for that particular spec. It's automatically placed a reducing T in, to make that connection. Now we're going to go ahead and place the butterfly valve. And it's looking up the spec and says that we've got various different types of valves in the spec. Which one do you actually want to place? That's the one. And we go ahead and insert it. Just defining its position. And if we look now, you'll see that having placed the butterfly valve, it's automatically placed the flanges either side. So we don't have to worry about that. And now we just orientate it to place the default um, top, uh, top sides. We need to change the actuator. So we're going to go to the properties. And down at the bottom there, you'll see that we have a hand lever. 
if we're going to go ahead and change that, so we just select the property for the for the operator. We'll select select an actuator case with a hand wheel, so that automatically updates the hand wheel. This line is below the floor, so we actually want it to come above the floor level. So we'll now increase the hand wheel size to make it come above. So now we've gone ahead and routed that line according to the PNID. Let's go ahead and place some supports. So again, from the supports menu, we select the type of support that we want to place, position it. We can, we can do that with the same command. We're positioning on three different lines. The support takes the ownership of the line that it's actually connected to. And the last thing we'll do is since they're all connecting to the floor below, we'll increase the, the uh, extension of the, of the support so that it actually will come down to the floor after we've changed its color. So that's the dimension. You see a little box that actually shows you what each dimension is. And there's our supports placed uh, in the actual drawing, or in the model, in fact. So we can go along, continue our piping, and here's the piping now for the pumping station, uh, completed, um, ready to produce our documentation. And you can see, you can see here that the the hand wheels are penetrating through the grating uh, as we need. So the next stage would be to let's create some drawings and uh, so we such as the piping orthos or the piping isometrics. So the first thing we're going to do is create a piping isometric. This is the line, this is the model where we were. And up here we have the isometrics. We select the line that we actually want to create and then select the style and now let it go ahead and create the isometric for us. That happens in background. And now it tells us that it's done and we can pull up the drawing and here's the isometric that's been created. Now you might say, you know, in the water industry, we don't normally create isometrics. Um, but, you know, one of the things is that the creation of isometrics is uh, included within Plant 3D. You don't have to pay anything extra for it. And it's a really useful tool for actually doing external checking that the line is as you, uh, as you expected it, because it's now look, now look at the line in, without the context or the clutter of the rest of the model. So you can step through and, uh, and actually verify that all the pieces that you want in that line are there in, in the correct order. The other thing is that uh, when this project is going to be constructed, you can pass these drawings over to your piping fabricators, uh, or you can actually uh, transmit them in, in digital format to uh, piping fabricators uh, who can actually create the lines for you. As you see, the bill of materials is included, as, as is also a cut piece length. And you can format this uh, PNID, uh, sorry, this uh, piping isometric uh, as you wish. All right, so now let's go ahead and look at piping orthos. So here's our model. I've taken away the floor so you can see it. And uh, the process of creating an ortho is you just simply select on create ortho view select the drawing or create a new drawing that you want to actually uh, create the ortho in. And that was already pre, the location will, is already predefined when you set up the project. And now it comes up with this, uh, this cube, which is actually going to show you what part of the model you can select, which of the reference files you actually want to be included in the drawing you can now uh, define the size of the cube by simply 
taking a face and dragging it. You can define which view you want, whether you want it to be a plan view or a elevation. Here we're moving the cube around. Or we can actually load a predefined uh, viewport. So in this case, call it PS1, so the, the viewport automatically aligns with that. And when we're ready to go, we've got everything set up. We just click, we define the scale, make sure that's correct, and then we just say go. In this case now, here we place where we want that viewport to be placed. We want to, in this case, we're going to rotate it through 90 degrees. And now it creates the drawing from the model by doing a hidden line removal process, adds some annotation automatically, and there, there is our, uh, our orthographic drawing. We can add a bill of materials to that, and to do that, we just simply point to the actual view that we want to produce the bill of materials for, place the bill of materials, and automatically the bill of materials is, is extracted, for the actual components that exist within that particular viewpoint. And then using another another command, we can actually place leaders to show, to, to actually identify the items within the drawing itself. So in those few minutes, I, what I've done is I've taken you through the process of creating the process plant, defi defining the PNID, using the PNID, and creating the documentation. So what I'd like to do now is hand you back over to Andy, who'll take us through the rest of the workflow. So there you go, Andy. Hopefully, it's all set Thank for you. you. Thank you very much. So hopefully everyone can see my screen. Okay, so um, Ian was just talking about documentation. So let's let's sort of stick with that for the time being. So if we go back to our back to our Revit model, um, uh, we can see in terms of documentation, um, Revit does this sort of thing uh, very well. So uh, I've created some some sheets here with uh, live uh, views of uh, the model itself. So here we've got some, we've got some sections, and we've got some elevations, and that is just completely standard uh, you know, Revit, Revit stuff. Um, but what I want to do now is to bring in the uh, the plant work that Ian has just created. Okay, and we do that just by pulling in his DWGs. Okay, so there's a couple of ways to go on this. We can uh, we can we can link those those CAD files in, or um, I'm actually going to import them. I don't want to save it. Um, and so what I can do is I can say, okay, bring in this uh, this piping. So I think that's the uh, I think that's the one. Um, I'm just going to go origin to origin, and it's only going to let me bring it into the bottom level there. So I'll just say um, open that. So that's brought that in. So you can see it's in at it's actually in at the wrong at the wrong level in this case. So what I can do is I can just select it and come over to the property panel and just put it in at level zero, which is where it's meant to be. You can see it's it's moved that into position. Okay, so you can see we now have that plant that uh, that Ian's uh, created uh, in the Revit model. We can go underneath and see that it's all in all in the right position, all present. Um, while he was something he didn't show you, he has actually produced some additional plant for this, so we'll pull that in as well. And let's have a look. Um, this, I think. Okay, so again, I think I'll need to change the level for that. 
pull that in at level zero. Okay, so we can see all of that additional plant in there. Now, if we go to the, uh, the sections and elevations, because they're live, you can see that they're now pulled in We can see them there in those in those actual views. Like so. Okay. So what we can also do, of course, um, something that would be required is now that the um, now that the uh, the plant has been pulled into Revit, we would then normally go ahead and have a look at any additional. Uh, support steel work which would be required so we would model that additional steel work um, using the, the normal Revit tools and the, and the connections that I, I showed you earlier just to uh, just to build that out okay so moving from here um, I think we'll probably go to uh, Navis works now where we'll we'll see a, a model which has got the additional steel work uh, support steel work modeled um, and then we can clash it against that uh, the, the, the piping to make sure it's all in the correct place. So if we go to uh, Navis, so this is Navis Works, um, you can see we have the the building um, that we that we've modelled in Revit. We also have the um, the additional plant and the pumping station that Ian has modelled. And you can also see that we've also modelled in some additional support steel work uh, for the for the overhead piping. Okay, so they were obviously done in, in, in separate products. So we now need to clash them to make sure there's no, uh, no mismatch there. So we can go to the clash detective. Um, and then all we need to do is just select the, uh, the, the two parts that we we'll want to clash together. And we hit run test. Um, and then it finds all the uh, all the clashes for us. Okay, so if I just scroll down here, we can see that there is in fact a clash that we found. Um, this overhead pipe here is actually clashing against uh, one part of this support still work. Okay, so we've identified that, um, and then of course we can then assign that to a person. Um, and then add new comments uh, and then that will be ready for that particular person to uh, to try and try and figure that out and find out what's what went wrong and fix it okay um, and then uh, once that's done we can then uh, say okay what about pulling everything together all into one big uh, InfraWorks model so that we can we can visualize what we've got in context um, and then all the uh, all the stakeholders can can see what uh, what we've done so this is the uh, this is the model we were looking at earlier um, and all you need to do is just hit the refresh button the the updated Revit model uh, now uh, is available to us and then if we go uh, if we go inside, you can see now that all that plant is available to us inside InfraWorks. It's all there underneath as well. It takes a bit of time to, to process some of that. But you can see what uh, you can see what what's happened there. Okay, so that is the uh, that, that is the basic workflow. And as you can see, we've gone through quite a few different products, but we've only used maybe two or three different uh, file types, mostly just uh, DWGs. Um, 
So I'm hoping that was useful for you. Um, we've got uh, 10 minutes left now. So I think we said at this point we would look at maybe looking at questions. And we've got a number of, of really good questions that have come in as we do that. Um, prior to getting into that, we do want to ask just one final question. We've got one final poll question. So if everyone can kind of turn their attention um, to this right now, we're just interested um, to find out if you've got any interest in uh, following up or finding out more information on that. And so we'll let this poll question go for about another 20 seconds or so. Um, so if you don't mind uh, providing an input response right there. Um, and then once that concludes, then we'll dive into some of these questions that we have. A lot, a lot of good questions that, that we'd like to handle between uh, Andy and, and Ian. So we'll let that go for just a few more seconds. And we'll go ahead and wrap that up. Okay. Great. Thank you, everyone, for your response. Really appreciate it. So, um, Andy, if you want to just leave it up, the first question that we had, we had quite a few questions that were related to this. And so I'll try and handle these um, hopefully as, uh, as intelligibly as possible as possible here but uh, the first question um, and there were several that that followed up that were similar to this but has to do with uh, real world coordinates um, does plant 3d handle real world coordinates or is there a similar uh, reference point similar to how civil 3d and the revit uh, coordination uh, collaboration works is is there a way to handle real world coordinates in that regard and that, that's probably a question more for for ian so uh, yes, I mean one of the things that, um, that we we do with with uh, in the plant world is uh, we essentially work with a plant coordinate system, which is then related back to the real world coordinate system, uh, and that, so yes, you can do that. Um, but when you create the model, we create it in the plant coordinate system to keep the the, the values. Uh, you know, small so that we don't get rounding errors, etc. So best thing is uh, is when we actually pull it all together, we xref to uh, another file which actually links the world coordinate system to the plant coordinate system. So, so yes, similar, so similar, similar to Revit, but there is a way to have those uh, real world coordinate system um, involved in there if needed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the uh, the questions that we had in this. Um, um, Andy, I think came up when you were bringing that up. Uh, a lot of people were asking, why not? Why do you import the file instead of linking it? Um, it? Is there something that's better from linking versus importing? And the question was, does it break the real the real time connection if you import it versus uh, linking the file? Um, there was no there's no um, preference for me. There's there's file size issues. Yeah, and that's one one of the questions followed up saying the same thing. He said we have a, a a model that's one gigabyte plus in Revit, and they can't just export it into the DWG. Um, but they're wondering what you recommend between the two, I suppose. For what for what I've just answered today, we could you, you, you would you would probably normally link it. Link um, it, okay. It, would, it wouldn't make it would make any difference in 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 terms of. Um, uh, you know, Navis works and all that sort of stuff. We're, we're keeping the um, the piping and the uh, the building model separate anyway. We want to we want to do that um, so that we can so that we can clash effectively against them in Navis works. Um, and all we're doing in uh, in, in Revit with the um, with the plant is identifying um, where we need support still work. So. Um, is it personal preference? But if you want to keep the file size down, uh, just just link it. Okay. I think what I should what I'd like to add actually is that um, this was a this was an international project. Um, even though we both speak the same language, uh, I'm located in the U.S. and Andy's located in the U.K. And as a result, Andy created the model in metric, and I created the plant model in imperial units. And you see, it fits together just fine. Okay, very good. <clears throat> okay, um, one of the questions we had was, um, isn't it possible to model some of these plants or some of these these uh, pipe networks in Revit? And I guess the question is, is what's the difference between the two? You know, what does Plant 3D offer that maybe Revit doesn't have uh, the ability to to model? I think the best answer to that is the philosophy of piping. 
Um, so I, I was very careful to state that uh, we, we use Plant 3D for process piping. Um, process piping generally uses uh, piping specifications to determine the types of components uh, that you would place in a line specific to the process conditions for that particular line. So it allows us to have a very small subset of components uh, using various standards. Uh, so in, in, in our world, we would call Plant 3D a spec-driven piping system. Mm -hmm. uh, Re Revit is not. Revit uh, uses uh, uses families approach, um, and so you have to really know your spec and handle it to, in order to place the piping components. Whereas Plant Three D has Plant Three D has those things predefined, correct? It's all predefined and allows you to select. You notice that when I went from the P and ID to the piping model, I selected the P and ID component. Right, the piping spec actually determined exactly what physical component that would be to be placed in. The, I didn't have to do any lookups at all. Uh, it just did it automatically. So all I had to do is place it. Okay. Now, when viewing uh, things in the three-dimensional view, uh, isometric view, are there ways to to modify those uh, configured views? Or um, others were, were saying that they prefer to rotate their viewports or, or get a slightly different angle on that. Are there ways to predefine those or to, to modify those views if needed? Yeah, what we do is when we create a drawing, I'm, I'm assuming this is created for the creating creation of an orthographic drawing. Correct, um, correct. So when we create that, the, the viewport is actually we, we is, is associated with the actual drawing. So best thing is to to, uh, to actually rotate the viewport in the drawing. And then when the model actually changes, all we have to do is update that particular viewport and it automatically takes the new content in. It's it's connected. So we the, the easiest thing is that you end up with a predefined drawing format and you're just updating by the fact that you've rotated the viewport in the actual uh, drawing. Okay, very good. Um, other uh, Another question um, was stating that um, they've had uh, they found out the hardware hardware that uh, plant isn't very comfortable with importing spreadsheets particularly when others are um, in them or, or doing some modifications any suggestions or ways to avoid any kind of conflicts when bringing in those spreadsheet when bringing in that spreadsheet data for plant 3d um, this this there's an awful lot of um, things that could be happening the most common aspect is in the data manager uh, You've got to make sure that your sheet that's open in your spreadsheet and the um, the actual tab in the data manager link. So sometimes you may have, if you we we have a hierarchy. So for example, if you're pulling in pumps, it may start off as equipment, and then the next level down is pumps, and then the next level down is uh, centrifugal pumps. If you have your tab open in the spreadsheet at centrifugal pumps, and you've got the tab open in data manager as pumps, you don't have the right connection, so the data won't won't um, migrate in properly. So I'm sure that that's what the, what the person's finding. They've just not got the two correctly linked. Gotcha, okay. Okay, well, uh, another question, and we are going to have way more questions than we're going to be able to uh, get to. So I want to thank everybody who has submitted questions. We will try and follow up as we're able. Um, we'll take a look at this, and, and for those who are interested, kind of stay on for just a bit and see if we can answer those. But um, again, do want to thank everybody who has submitted questions, and, and hopefully we're able to handle some or most, um, but but I know we're not going to get to all. So again, I do apologize for that. Um, one question says, um, um, how do you get the piping not to show up as a wireframe when it's coming from Plant 3D? Um, and it says, is the equipment um, and piping um, table that's something that uh, is Revit Orthos? Mm. Is, there, is, that, is that a setting or is that something that... I don't know. I mean, because, you know, Andy, I mean, I, I, I model just using the standard tools. Andy brought the, the piping into uh, into uh, into Revit and they, it came in as shaded. So uh, I, I, yeah. I don't know how to answer that question. Maybe that, we can take that one offline, try and find out okay. where the actual problem is. I think one yeah. issue. Right. And and that's what we'll do. So we'll make these questions available um, to you, um, Andy and Ian, um, and, and 
when they uh, submit the question, um, I believe it's something that they've they've got their um, information. So we'll see if we can uh, follow up on on some of these that are more pressing as well. So. Um, Guys, with that, we are just about to the top of the hour. Want to thank you guys for for your time. Um, good demonstration, very I, I think visually compelling, but uh, also a, a very good in, as far as some of these things go. So, um, again, um, thanks to those who are participated. Uh, thanks for, who have stayed on the line and, and kind of gone through the questions and answers, and we'll we'll do the best we can to to follow up. But um, guys, look forward to uh, to next month as well. Um, look for some information coming on that. Um, with that, I don't know if you guys have anything to, to end with, uh, but again, I do want to thank you for your time. Yeah, I'll, just, I'll just add a thank you to everybody and uh, I hope you learned a lot from what we showed you. Great, and just one final uh, one final thing. We have had a number of questions. Again, these um, this recording will be available within the next day or so, and that'll be on the um, civil community sites or the um, the AEC portal as well, which we showed um, sort of at the at the beginning of the of the presentation. But um, you can look for those um, same place where you signed up. Um, the recordings will be available. You can show that to anybody and everybody you like. We'll also get that out on YouTube as well. So uh, be in, in a handful of locations for for everyone to to follow up and and take a look at this again. So again, Andy, Ian, thank you very much. Thank you everybody, and everyone have a great day. Thank you.